I have cash flow problems. It's what we're talking about today, the East Central Business Show. I'm joined by a resident accountant, Robert King from Experian. Good to be here. Almost tripped over that one. Now, <laughs> if you've got cash flow problems, a lot of people experience it, particularly early months of the year or particular times of year can be a real challenge. Mm. What's going on, Robert? Yeah, particular times of year, that's probably uh, quite often we find January and February where people really struggle with their cash flow because mm. it's up, up, you've had Christmas, you've had all your big bills coming in over Christmas uh, and then business quite often just shuts down. So mm. don't, nothing happens in January and February. So typically we find that's the, the time of the, the year that people do start to uh, struggle with their cash flow, definitely. Yeah, so. now as an accountant and a trust advisor, what do you advise people to do about yeah. getting on with the process of getting more cash in the bank and improving your cash flow? Yeah, look, there's, so there's a lot of uh, things you need to think about. But first of all, when I hear people say they've got cash flow problems, um, it's not really getting into the root of what the problem is. The, you've either got um, inflow or outflow problems. There's either something wrong with mm -hmm. your uh, invoicing, your quoting, your collecting money, um, or there's something you've just got too much money going out the door. So you've got to identify where you are in that stage and which problem you actually have before mm. you can address the problem oh, properly. Let's just drill down on a couple of those. So around <coughs> quoting, what do you mean there? Yeah, so simple one. So when I go out to see a new client, I give them a quote, in writing, there you go, send it to them. Mm -hmm. Sure. Then what? Do you sit around, do you wait for them to knock on your door? Or do you actively call them, follow them up, ask them if they got the quote? Ask them if it was included everything they wanted? Ask them questions about it? Make them, well, they've probably gone out and got quotes from two other people, whether it's accountants or whoever it is. Mm. Um, if you don't follow them up, you're just going to get put in a pile and you could sure. be at the bottom of that pile. So make sure they put you at the top of that pile. Oh, absolutely. And there's marketing and sales process we help people with here within eCentral where, you know, they, they know that if they turn up at a certain time with the quote and ask the question, <coughs> there's yep. a substantially better chance of getting the business. So they're, they're trying to automate and understand with a bit of AI when that time is mm. and just get over the line. As simple as quoting and asking for the business, yeah, a lot yeah, of the times. exactly. And make it easy for them to accept the quote as well. Mm. I mean, sometimes people give you a 20-page document for you to read. It's like, well, I'm going to get that as a consumer and just go, here's a one-page. I'm going to look at that one first. So sure, make it easy sure, for them. Sure, sure, sure. Absolutely. And then so getting the business and then obviously once you've landed the business because you've made it easy and you've asked the questions, um, invoicing seems to be like I've got an adage. I say invoice first, ask questions later. Yeah, yeah. And you probably uh, agree with that to a certain extent. Different industries are different. So uh, if you go to a coffee shop or a restaurant, you got to pay them there and then. Mm. Um, whereas a lot of service industries, they, they struggle a little bit because they send out an invoice to a client, and again they just wait. They go, well, okay, I've got my 14 days term on there. I'll wait for 14 days. Oh, his terms are 30 days. I'll wait 30 days. He hasn't paid. 60 days come. It's a, it's a spy, it goes out of control. Again, send the invoice, be strict with your terms. Okay? Mm, um, and we've talked about Xero as an example. xero has got some really good automation tools where you can actually say, okay, you've said this invoice is due tomorrow. I want you to send a nice little nudge to this client to tell them their invoice is due tomorrow. Just, it's probably in the bottom of their pile somewhere. Make it easier for them to find it and pay it. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of uh, tools you can automate in that process as well. Sure, sure. And then if people aren't paid, then you obviously need to talk about cash terms or debt collectors, yeah? Yeah, look, uh, and that's another thing. You've got to sometimes look at your clients and say, are they good clients? Mm. And, if, and if they're notoriously bad for not paying you on time, get something up front. If they, if they want the work done, they'll give you something up front. Might not be everything. You might just say 25% or it could be 100%. Get that up front or make it cash, cash on delivery for a lot of businesses. And if they don't pay your invoice, either cut them off, you've got to be brutal, send the debt collectors in. Okay. okay. Uh, that, that's their job, they're experts at that. Don't waste your time with it. You've got better things to do than chase debts. Mm, okay, true. So that's a lot of things on the inflow side. Yeah, mm. so how about on the outflow? Yeah. Expenses, oh my God, expenses. Yeah, look, you generally find that your expenses are fairly consistent from one month to the next mm. or one, one quarter to the next. They don't mm. vary a lot. So it's really a case of looking at your expenses and saying, well, let, let's look at the bigger ones to start with. So if you're buying and selling products, look at your suppliers, who you're using. Mm. Um, do you need to maybe look for other suppliers that are a little bit cheaper? Don't uh, negig, negig, that's not a word, renege on the quality. Um, can you arrange quality, uh, quantity 
discounts mm. uh, or, sure. or payment discounts. Say, look, we still want to buy from you. If we pay up front, will you give us a 5% discount or a 2% discount, whatever it might be? So suppliers, have a look at them first. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, I think the second biggest expense behind staff is rent. So sure. if you're renting a premises, do you have a lot of space? Do you, have you got 20 people where 30 people should be? Maybe you need to downsize a little bit. Or maybe you need to look for a premises that isn't quite as close to the, the CBD, for example. You need to come back a little bit. So you've sometimes got to make some really hard calls around rent, mm. uh, how much you're paying, and if you're in the right location as well. Sure, uh, sure. And I think lastly, we just I touched briefly on staff. Mm. Uh, that's another time you've got to make a harsh call about whether you've got the right staff on mm. board mm. and if they're being productive or not. Look, I see countless examples of receptionists sitting at the desk checking their Facebook or I was going to say their LinkedIn profile. They don't usually have a LinkedIn, but <laughs> checking their Facebook or... Well, looking for another <laughs> job, hopefully. Well, exactly, yeah. Well, we had an example of going into an office one day and she was doing stuff for her wedding, just organising all that. So you've, mm. you've got to question that around staff sometimes. You can't allow for that. You can't afford it as a small business yourself. owner. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, so that's the thing. So, And then you've got on the whiteboard over there to talk about budgeting, yeah? Yeah. Ultimately, yeah. around <clears throat> inflow and outflow, you've got to mm. have a bit of a... I wouldn't, Something drawn up for that. I wouldn't be an accountant if I didn't talk about budget somewhere <laughs> along the line. But it, it is really important because you start with your budget and say, well, if we go along, this is what we want to achieve. Hmm. And if you vary from that, you can pinpoint why. So you've said this is my sales and what I want to achieve given my level of sales staff. Hmm. Is that the problem? Or is the problem that you're suddenly spending a lot more on again, staff or where, whatever it might be. Mm. So it's only until you have that budget and you compare your actual to your budget that you can, uh, you can really work out where your cash flow issues are. No, there's some uh, wise words around that. Now, obviously, this is all part of something where this leads into a, a, a proper conversation with your accountant. Hopefully, it's experience. How do they have that conversation, Robert? Yeah, look, it's quite often um, people wait too long. That's the first thing I'd like to say. People wait. 12 months hmm. getting in trouble before they come and have the conversation with us. So first of all, don't be afraid to speak to your accountant about hmm. it. Hmm. Sit down, do those budgets, get them in place. Uh, for our, our clients, they know they can call us anytime. We don't charge for phone calls. We want them to come to us with these problems if they're having them. So um, for our clients, they jump on our website, which uh, is experian.com.au, mm -hmm. um, or they just give me a call, whatever's easiest. Oh, fabulous. Okay, Robert Keating, the resident expert for accounting on the East Central Business Show. We'll talk to you next time. So, thank you very much, Robert, for being the resident expert accountant on the East yep. Central Business Show. And uh, so, just in this little post roll segment, let's just talk briefly about who Experian are and the sort of client you like to talk to. We've got two minutes, let's go. Two minutes, all right. Um we're, we like to think we're a little bit different to other accountants out there. We, we like to wear, as you can see, jeans and a t-shirt and a jacket as opposed to your typical accountant who wears a suit and tie mm. and sits behind his desk all yeah, day. So a little bit... Don Johnson of uh, accountants. Oh, I didn't want to say anything, but now you've mentioned it, so <laughs> you could be right. Um, so we, I think we're, we're a little bit more approachable than a lot of other accountants out there. And as I've said in the past, one of our philosophies is not to charge people for phone calls. We don't want people sitting there afraid to ask us a question because they're going to get billed for the time. Yeah, so. okay. Fabulous. Then, importantly, the disclaimer in these video segments we do is it advice? Yeah. Um, look, and that, that's very important. It's, it's general advice only. It's, it's a conversation started. If, something, if you've heard something in this video that appeals to you that you need specific advice on, mm. come and talk to us. We need to know what a client's individual circumstances are before we can give them tailored advice to suit their uh, requirements. Okay, and the much. best way for them to do that is jump on your website and find the best phone number or best way it means to contact you. Yeah, yeah absolutely. We've got a few different offices around, so we've got some different phone numbers depending, depending on where the client's located. Mm. But if you jump on our website, they can actually, you can flick through an email or give us a call on the, the appropriate and that uh, website office. is? Uh, Experian.com.au. Okay, nice very active on Facebook, so check out their Facebook page as well. That's where you'll find these videos as well. Perfect. Thanks Happy with me. that? Pleasure. All right, fabulous. We'll see you next time.